This week on Maker Update, a hat for all your fruit, a robot that does this, DIY off-grid communications, and a comprehensive guide on metal fabrication. Hello and welcome back to Maker Update, the show where we find all the coolest maker projects across the internet and show them off to you to hopefully help you get inspired. I'm Tyler Weingartner and I hope you're all doing great. We've got a fantastic show for you, so let's get started with the project of the week. Do you tend to forget your shopping bag when you go to the grocery store? I know that I do, and so does Simone Yetch, but she rarely forgets her hat, which is why she's building a baseball cap that can unfold into a mesh bag, that way she won't forget to bring it when she goes shopping. Like with any good design project, she begins with a few goals and constraints to keep her project on track. It needs to be a decent sized bag. It needs to be a normal looking hat. And it has to easily change from hat to bag and back. The first decision is how is the hat going to split apart so it can unfold into the bag? Should it separate where the bill meets the hat or should it separate along the seams on the top? Should the ear flaps fold down to become the handles? It's not an easy problem to solve and there's a ton of trial and error going on here. And typical of Simone's work, she makes her struggle part of the process. After tons of paper and fabric prototypes, plus some moral support from her pets, she's finally moving in a direction towards the finish line. There's a zipper across the top of the hat that keeps everything together when it's folded up. But when it comes apart, the mesh portion expands into the bag. Maybe not a perfect bag for your shopping trip, but it's a great proof of concept and a clever project. More projects. All the way from Sydney, Not An Engineer has built a parallel access Tripteron robot, which is a bizarre sort of contraption that moves like this. It does this by way of four independent sliding mechanisms and a set of linkages, which allows it to translate in three different independent axes while staying perfectly parallel and moving around in this utterly bizarre way. This is a fairly complex machining project that enables him to really get his head around four axis milling, which means you can rotate the part underneath the moving axes of the milling head. For the code, he's using a modified version of Gerbil, which is normally used to control CNC routers and similar machines. This is mostly a technical exercise for him, but at the end, he reveals he's going to use it as a very elaborate camera slider. It's pretty cool. From Random Alley Cat, I saw this project for a 3D printed Meshtastic pager. Meshtastic is a mesh-based communications framework using LoRa for long-range off-grid communication using inexpensive microcontrollers. Alley Cat's contribution to the project is this beautifully designed 3D printed enclosure and pager design. It's super compact and even includes a battery, a holster, and a belt clip. You can get their 3D printed files by following the links down in the description. And finally, Marius Hornberger is building a welding fixture table on a budget. He's just beginning his welding journey and he's not trying to break the bank, but he wants a fixture table just like the pros use. He's made his from lengths of square steel tubing, but to get the grid of fixturing holes accurate, he needs to do a lot of repeated but very precise machining operations. There's a ton of great tips in here, like how to get precise punch marks in metal, and this guide template for making all the holes in the steel. This is a great project with a ton of consideration towards accuracy. Check it out. <laughs> Time for some tips and tools. Wesley Treat has a wonderful video about how to get started in metal fabrication. If this video showed up in your feed, you probably were pulled in by the thumbnail about how to join metal without welding. He gets there eventually, but I promise the journey is worth it. He shares all of his secrets about how to cut, shape, bend, and join metal. Fancy tools, cheap tools, tools he loves, and tools he hates. DIY tools and all the stuff that helped him start his business. It's great stuff. Need It Make It has a video about making stronger 3D prints. The common belief is that more infill makes a stronger part, but this video shows some different results. 
He's testing parts that have a circular cross-section hollowed out from the part, in contrast to some thick-walled parts that have a high level of infill. What's happening here is that the hollowed out part is benefiting from both an interior and exterior layer of the thickened walls, making for a stronger print overall. It seems counterintuitive at first, but it makes sense when you watch it. Over on Adafruit, John Park has a live stream where he revealed a recent project that he's calling the Servo Commander 2. This is a quick and interactive way to test out servo motors for animatronics and robotics projects. You can hot swap your servos, get a readout of their pulse frequency for control, use rotary encoders to position them, and set preset positions you can recall later. Lastly, Stefan from CNC Kitchen is exploring the idea of using his 3D printer nozzle for injection molding. He's injecting 3D printer filament into an SLA printed mold. First things first, he's only going to be able to create very small parts. Modern 3D printers can extrude a pretty high volume in a short amount of time, but that has nothing on industrial injection molding machines. He's also using a high performance resin from Form Labs to create his molds. With a high flow hot end and a bit of mold release, he's able to get a near complete mold. Maybe not practical for production workflows, but the details he is able to achieve with this are pretty impressive. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, DigiKey has been sponsoring a series of teardowns on Becky Stern's personal YouTube channel. And you don't want to miss these. Joined by her friend and electrical engineer, David Craner, she explores modern electronics like this health tracking ring, an anti-nausea wristband, the modern Furby toy, and more. Not only do you get insider knowledge about how these sort of components are selected and manufactured, but Becky also sends all of her teardowns to be CT scanned by Lumafield. So you get this incredibly detailed inside look at them before a single screw is removed. It's fantastic. All right, and that is going to do it for this week's show. As always, you can find out more info about every single one of these projects, including code, 3D files, instructions, and more by following the links down in the description. While you're there, be sure to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and leave us a comment. Huge thanks to DigiQ for making this show possible and to you for watching. Take care. We'll see you soon.